Hi, my name is James. I'm a stadium tour guide at Stamford Bridge, uh, which is the home of Chelsea FC, who are, of course, the holders of the Champions League. A great match on Saturday, the uh, 29th of May 2021. Uh, thanks to all our fantastic players who worked so hard throughout the season and uh, especially those who played in the game. Such a hard, hard match against a brilliant opponent like Manchester City. Thanks to all the coaches and managers in the past who've led to this and of course to our great new manager Thomas Tuchel who has achieved so much in such a short time and uh, last but obviously not least the best owner of a football club in the world and that is Roman Abramovich thank you Roman uh, good luck to Viva Football Show I hope you have as much success as Chelsea FC has done very best of wishes from James Hi everyone, this is Anaya. Uh, welcome to the Viva Football Show. We are kicking off this first episode with the special edition, which is celebrating the kings of Europe, Chelsea FC. And with me are my two friends, Sushrut and Mangesh, who are the supporters of Chelsea FC. Hi Sushrut and hi Mangesh. Hi. Hello. So the blue flag is indeed flying very high. And the... <laughs> And right from qualifying for the Champions League, right from being uncertain to secure the top four spot and to directly winning the Champions League. So, how exactly was the season? Firstly, it's been a very topsy-turvy season because there has been a, there have been a lot of emotions here. And right from getting uh, from the sacking of our very own to appointing of Thomas Tuchel and yeah. to like we didn't even expect uh, from. The signings not performing to the value to which they were paid, and uh, but in the end, it's all done. In the end, we we have become the champions of Europe again after nine years. So I guess it's been a good season, and yeah, couldn't couldn't ask for anything. Right, right. There were many ups and downs, as in uh, our previous coach, legend of Chelsea Football Club, Lampard. He also did very um, great signings, but was uh, was weak in tactics or tactical gameplay. But sure, his signings um, were indeed great uh, for this new seal winning. And uh, previously, going back to 2012, mm. Chelsea changing manager uh, in the mid uh, mid season resulted them UCL winning trophy at 2012 also and now 2021 yeah so yes there are many ups and downs but there's still some problems in the final third that should yes uh, yeah I think mm -hmm. uh, they will yeah. Uh, yeah do something yeah. better uh, you know, throughout this whole season, there was this whole talk of the similarities between the uh, between 2012 and yeah. 2021 win. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so it's been quite a uh, it's been quite a ride because a lot of people mentioned to us that uh, even in 2012 we changed managers mid season. We had a 29 year old Petacek. This time we have 29 year old Edward Mendy. Yeah. Then uh, even signings are uh, like there have been a lot of similarities, and mostly I was irritated with all of them <laughs> <laughs> because you know it was <laughs> like it was kind of jinxing it. But uh, in the end, it all worked out. And I'm so happy to see that we are again the champions of Europe after nine years. And it's a super emotional journey. Yeah. 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 So thanks, guys. You also answered one of the next questions, which I was going to ask you about uh, the 2020, 2021 uh, victory and the victory in 2012 also. So now Chelsea were the underdogs and Man City were the favorites to win the Champions League. And surely they were at the top of their game. Uh, so, what do you think went wrong that day, which Chelsea took advantage of? And also, what was wrong? What was wrong with Man City? The number one factor which influenced it for me was that Pep Guardiola overthinks too much. Uh, <laughs> he overthinks a lot, and he did that again, uh, like a lack of a central defensive midfielder uh, in the Champions League final is something is a blunder which you cannot cannot make in the biggest game of the season. He went for a more attacking lineup because I guess he thought that you know we have a uh, we have a plethora of attacking options and we can just utilize all of them and blow Chelsea away like they did with Everton in the five nil win, mm. uh, which was their last game in the Premier League. So yeah. 
I believe that you know this was a tactical mistake, and uh, as we know, Thomas Tuchel is a very sound tactician. He uh, he has shown it throughout the season that he is comfortable with changing formations. Like mostly, he went for three four three, but the changing the change of personnel, like right, uh, like playing Kai Havertz as a false nine instead of going with Pulisic, Werner, and Mason Mount, he benched Pulisic even though he was in tremendous form. Going with mm-hmm. Havertz, having that playing, getting that extra dimension into the game, uh, while Like he brings a complete different dynamic to the game with his runs, with his uh, he, he is insanely quick. Even if we can't see it on the screen, so one thing it was two kills masterclass. The defense was absolutely solid, and it was Pep Guardiola's overthinking which eventually led to his loss. Right, right. Yes, Sushit. As Sushit said, I agree with all the points. Mm-hmm. I also want to mention that both the teams were struggling for the final third. in the final third so man man city also got very great chances that mm. they were converted into the goals and chelsea also are struggling in the final third so i i just felt that overall the game was really very nice but the final third was very poor on the both the sides mm. nice. yes, so what are your So, what are your thoughts on Kante's performance? Like, he proved to be <laughs> man of the match in the semi-finals against Real Madrid, also, and then he proved himself in the finals again. So, oh, okay. Uh, so, I-, I can see that you mentioned Real Madrid because you're a Real Madrid fan. So, yeah, I want to see how that don't take me back you. there. Yeah, uh, we're talking yeah, about Chelsea right now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, I-, I hope that you enjoyed the performance of Angelo Kante versus Real Madrid. I really do. And uh, <laughs> I second did, thing I, I want. To- Yeah, and the second thing uh, which I want to mention is uh, the Angolo Kante is incredible. He was everywhere on the pitch, averaging five tackles, and you know his interceptions rate, and just the driving force behind the midfield. And uh, in all of the games, you can see he dominated the midfield entirely against Real Madrid, as you say, as you said, he pocketed the midfield, which is. which was very unusual because real madrid's midfield is pretty good and they are all yeah. legends so it was yeah. a new experience to see angolo conte pocketing three people and uh, again in the champions league final his runs his intensity and you know a lot of people were concerned that edward mendy not being fit is the main factor mm-hmm. but i believe angolo conte being fit was the main factor not edward mendy as you can see in the defensive uh, yeah mendy provides a different dimension he makes sure that the defense is solid i agree but the difference between him and edward uh, and kante being fit is that kante is the driving force behind chelsea because he's the one who gives the midfield a different dimension and i believe that he was the most important factor in our champions league glory right yes i kante is the most favorite of mine <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, yeah he deserves it and he is the uh, underrated player i think most of most of the people like they criticize him many factors and many parameters but i feel that he he was amazing in the ucl and the league since he signed in to chelsea mm. so that's it yeah chan kakandi is like <laughs> oh yeah what do you think should he win the ballon d'or yes if france <laughs> wins the euros He surely yeah. will. Yes. Or England wins the Euros. Mason Mount is the <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people are consistently saying that Angelo Conte should win the Ballon d'Or based on his Champions League performances, and I do not agree. I think that you know he should perform. Uh, he should perform at the same level uh, in the Euros to make sure that he earns yeah. the Ballon d'Or this season. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you know, just because he's humble and likable, he is getting a exactly. lot of Ballon d'Or shouts. But I think he should perform at the Euros to to get an actual shot at the Ballon. Predicting only on the clubs. Uh, club performances, you sh- you shouldn't predict. Exactly, right, right. Should win. You have exactly. to perform to the international calls also. International level, then yeah. If he wins the Euros, then surely he'll get the Ballon d'Or. So now coming back to think. Euros, who do you think and uh, which team is your favorite? England, England. Yeah. <laughs> I expected England. the same answer from both of you. Yeah, perfect. So now, what was your reaction to Kai Havertz's video when he was being interviewed by the press? Oh. <laughs> to be honest, right now I give a fuck on that. We won the fucking championship. <laughs> I love the language. 
<laughs> it, however fruity it was, it was <laughs> uh, it it displayed the emotions of every fan uh, fully, and I loved Aspliquetta's intervention in the interview because it was uh, I loved how he mentioned that this guy has top mentality and he's a superstar because it has been a tough season for him when he went into rhythm for the first time he got diagnosed with COVID and after he wasn't picked as much but when yeah. he was he delivered and honestly I was shit scared when. Uh, he cut Ederson, and I had flashbacks of Fernando Torres. <laughs> flashbacks of him missing, not scoring. <laughs> but yeah, I was scared. But in the end, he scored, and I'm very happy. Great. Yes, I also got a very positive vibes after that reaction of Aspi <laughs> on Havertz. He, he was exact. He he's exactly how a captain should be. the reaction what he said was boost was i don't know why but i feel that he said that to boost how it's because he had a tough season this year so yeah yes i after that what asp said i was i was like i was really positive and mm-hmm. i was uh, i felt strong about yes we can win this yeah so what a what a season for him nice So was amazing. So now, uh, coming back to the uh, next season, there are going to be a lot of hopes and expectations from the champions. So now, what do you expect? Uh, do you expect any changes? And what do you expect from the manager? Do you expect him to make new signings, some changes? Uh, what do you expect from Thomas Tuchel? Yeah. So, firstly, I believe that. uh the signings of you know we need more leaders in the squad other than that we need a, a striker because as you can see werner is a striker but he's used he's been morely used like an inverted forward not exactly a striker exactly. so if we can get a number 9 like lukaku we are linked with lukaku if we can get a number 9 like lukaku i don't expect erling haaland or or harry kane because it's unrealistic and we don't want to deal with we don't want to deal with mino rayola because <laughs> no uh, and uh, so i believe that lukaku is a realistic goal and if he comes into the squad i believe we will have a completely new dimension because if you look at his game at inter milan you can see that he plays in a two striker system and in that he diverts more to the right side because he's naturally yeah. left footed so as you can see he's not exactly he's a striker he can hold up he can do all the things a proper number 9 does but on the other side he's incredibly fast and he switches to the right side and in our setup werner plays on the left side so with this new dimension we can strike him from the left as well as right with incredible pace and finishing and other than that uh, i wa- most people don't realize this but we insanely need a backup for angolo kante because if that guy is injured our midfield loses its dynamism completely we need declan rice Declan Rice or even the Monaco uh, Monaco signing uh, I Aurelian I can't pronounce his uh, surname <laughs> that guy or uh, yeah and a backup at left back or a centre back you know centre back we are linked with Nicolas Sula of Bayern Munich he's a good shout uh, and even a left back backup I uh, a lot of people are mentioning Hakimi he's being linked yeah. but I honestly yeah. don't see where he can fit into the system if he comes I'll be more than happy but I believe that we need a left back option to rotate for Chilwell so that I believe if we make those signings I believe we are 100% tackle contenders right yeah uh, if I totally agree with you that <laughs> see the the main problem is the final third you're <laughs> not able to convert goals so maybe warner he is a great player but he is fighting i don't know why i feel the chemistry is not fit for him so i i feel that the final third should be improved and somewhat center back mm-hmm. a backing for center back but uh, coming to the point <laughs> replacing kante mm. i have no other option to even just suggest mm. to that yeah this guy can replace kante because he's he is the guy that i don't i don't think that he can be replaced but yeah declan rice is the uh, is also a, a a top priority for him to be replaced but yes we should focus on the forwards more like 
replacing one or yeah adding one yeah so thank you so much guys for uh, for your insights and uh, this was the first episode of the viva football show and i hope that chelsea's new jersey proves to be lucky for them next season unlike the fa cup final so yeah wishing chelsea a very bright and successful season ahead and thank you so much guys yes so this was the very first episode of the viva football show don't forget to subscribe for viva football's new digital avatar the viva football show and also for detailed content subscribe the viva football magazine which is india's only football magazine in print format ending this episode with our editor's note and also some special messages to chelsea fc the champions of europe thanks to mayur who is chelsea india supporters club's marketing and screening head for these videos thank you for watching the first episode of the viva football show see you soon adios hi all welcome to viva football show as you all know we at viva football striving hard for us 5 years to popularize football in india and we sincerely believe that schools grassroots academies and clubs are the best way forward because kids have great interest and passion for football they are the vital aspect to create sports culture in society i often make this point at all the national and international forum that don't just look india as only a quantity market don't just look at the numbers look at the passion look at the quality there is a huge amount of interest for football in india all across india length and breadth of this beautiful country through viva football show our brand new digital avatar we are kicking off this journey of exploring indian football canvas it's your very own football media so keep on supporting us viva football think of football think of us the title is more important for the club all thanks to mason mount and kai havertz and of course the great defending during the last 10 minutes from the players thank you chelsea blue is the color football is the game <laughs> मैच में कुछ नहीं लगी तो जीत गया जीत गया जीत गया ऐसे भगवान का नाम लिया मैं कमाल चेल्सी कमाल